Zhou Yu is one of Wu's most valued strategists and tacticians, a cunning man with a sharp mind and deep connections with the Sun family. So let's have ourselves a little tale about Wu's finest tiger. Zhou Yu was a son of a prefect of Shu County and servant of the Han court. In 190, Sun Jian relocated his family to the province when he joined the campaign against Dong Zhuo. This allowed Zhou Yu to meet and befriend Sun Jian's eldest son, Sun Se. Being very close, Zhou Yu offered his services to the Sun family, much to Sun Se's overwhelming approval. In 194, Sun Tzu was sent by the warlord Yuan Shu to cross the Yangtze River into Yang province. He informed Zhou Yu of his mission, who quickly came to aid his friend. Together, they defeated Liu Yao and returned to Yang. Yuan Shu wanted to recruit Zhou Yu to his ranks, but Zhou Yu saw no success in Yuan's future and plotted to escape to Sun Tzu's service. Zhou Yu is an extraordinary hero and talent. He's like a brother to me. I still remember the time he helped us out in Dan Yang. I can never repay him for his help and contributions. In 198, Zhou Yu arrived in Wu territory and was personally greeted by Sun Se. He was given a commanding title, 2,000 troops, and 50 horses. From then on, he would serve Sun Se in his many campaigns in Jing. Alright, I now have the power to conquer Wu and beat the Shan Yue. When Sun Tzu was assassinated by Chu Gong's followers in 200, Zhou Yu rushed back to attend his funeral and handle the affairs in Wu. In 202, Cao Cao sent a letter to Sun Quan demanding the Sun surrender. When discussion with his subject proved inconclusive, he held a meeting between himself, Zhou Yu, and his mother, Lady Wu. From their advice, Sun Quan chose to wait and observe Cao Cao's action. In 208, Zhou Yu was sent to fight Huang Zhu at Jiangxia with Lu Su, Lu Meng, Gong Ning, and Ling Tong. Together they took Jiangxia and killed Huang Zhu. Sun Quan would receive a letter from Cao Cao claiming he had unified northern China and demanded Sun surrender again. Quan gathered his subjects and discussed his next move. Many suggested surrender, but Zhou Yu advised against it. Even though Cao Cao is the Han Chancellor in name, he is a villain who wants to usurp the state power. You should go to war and help the Han Dynasty eliminate its threats. And I assure you that I will defeat the enemy. Sun Quan pulled out his sword and smashed the table in front of him and said, From now on, any who suggest surrender will share in this desk's fate. Sun Quan allied himself with Liu Bei, and with the combined might of Zhou Yu, Zhu Geliong, and Peng Tong's stratagem, they dealt a crushing blow to Cao Cao's forces at Shi Bei. During Cao Cao's retreat to Chu, Zhou Yu planned with Liu Bei to force Cao Run out of the land. In the ensuing battle, Zhou Yu was hit by a stray poisoned arrow and had to retreat. Cao Run heard the news and rushed to force Zhou Yu's camp. Zhou Yu still continued to support his men despite his injuries and raised morale. By 209, both sides had sustained heavy losses. Cao Cao, not able to afford the continuous losses, had Cao Run retreat. So, Zhou Yu's character is followed very accurately in the games. He is shown to have a close brother-like relationship with Sun Se, and he is a reliable and intelligent strategist in Wu Kingdom. In Three Kingdoms Media, he is attributed to playing the flute, having been gifted with musical talent since his youth. And that's why he is shown playing it in the Dynasty Warriors 5 intro. He and Lu Meng are usually shown to be clad in robes with tigers inscribed on them. Though they were allies throughout most of their campaigning, Zhou Yu and Zhu Geliong had a rivalry, constantly trying to best each other with their wit during the struggle of Jing province. However, Zhu Geliong was able to get the better of him during his final years. Even on his deathbed, he woed being born in the same era as the Shu strategist. The Dao he wields in earlier games is actually inspired by Sun Jian's signature weapon. His weapon was changed to a bow staff in Dynasty Warriors 6, which its variations were named after the sky, with the Red Dusk, Dark Night, and Scarlet Dawn. One of the staves also shares the name of the Black Mountain Bandit, 
the Yellow Dragon. However, this might just be incidental. Like many Wu officers, Zhou Yu incorporates the use of fire in his combos, largely inspired by their iconic fire attack strategies. And as such, his attacks conjure raging infernos that engulf his foes. And of course, his Musou attacks follow this theme as well, with Hellfire, Meteor Shower, and Circling Flames. May the flames engulf you! In 210, Zhou Yu fell ill and was bedridden. Zhuge Liang seized Jing from the aftermath of the battle with Cao Run. Zhou Yu devised a plan to prevent Liu Bei from expanding out of their control. Offer him Lady Zhang Zhang. Liu Bei possesses characteristics of a fierce and ambitious hero. He also has under him generals with the might of bears and tigers. He's definitely not someone who'll remain subservient. I suggest moving him to Wu, build a palace for him there, and present him with women and gifts to entertain him. If I can use Liu Bei as a hostage, our goal will be accomplished. And now yet, we carve out land for them as resources, and allow the three men to be together. I'm afraid once the dragon encounters clouds and rain, it'll no longer remain a pond but the plan was foiled by Zhao Yun, who encouraged Liu Bei and Lady Sun to elope and escape Wu, with Lady Wu's blessing. After being prevented from passing through Jing to invade Liu Zhang by Zhu Geliang, Zhou Yu collapsed and was bedridden, and on his deathbed, he woed ever being born in the same era as Zhu Geliang. 